Okay then, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing I'd like to say, obviously, is thank you very much for coming this evening. We do appreciate it. And for those of you that were waiting for the bus with me, thank you for your patience. And for those of you that came on, tra on public transport, I also really appreciate that. Okay, so we've got lots of people here this evening from the whole of the audio, in audio industry, from the UK, the EU, USA and Asia. Um, so... And Australia. And Australia, I am so sorry, Stereonet. I am sorry. <laughs> I'm busy soft, I'm so sorry. So for us, the journey started in 2012. With this little fellow here, the Nano IDSD. Okay, you just have to wink at me if you want okay. to smile. Yeah. <laughs> so the Nano IDSD, as you can see, won an ISO award. And we, we still believe we are one of, one of, if not the youngest company to ever win an ISO, which is a great achievement. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> so, fast forward to 2018. And this little chap, the XDSD, yet another award-winning product. And again, we won... <laughs> <laughs> And again, we won another ISA for that one, as you can see. Right, so one of the things that we think we're good at here at iFi is looking at trends. So, we have identified four products that we think our distributors will like, and also that we think will provide an interesting story for the press gathered here this evening. As you can see, as it says, we all love music. Music has no boundaries, it's been around forever and will always be around. So we started in the 1950s with vinyl. Then we moved to the 70s with the music system. And then the 90s gave us the iPod. And now it seems that the speaker, the all-in-one speaker, is the way to go. And some of them, it has to be said, sound and look better than others. So, as you can see, it's just how we listen to music that changes. So, what we have identified, as I said, is four products that we think <coughs> will get you interested. One of them is a high-res wireless streaming device. The next is an audiophile digital to analog converter. And the next is a revolutionary new high-speed amplifier, and of course, with tubes. And the next is some amazing natural sounding loudspeakers. Okay, so we've got a DAC, a streamer, an amplifier, and speakers, all of course, which are very high end. Okay, so this is it. Should I, should I show them or no? Oh, we didn't discuss that. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, seriously, I think it's time to see it. So we decided to make really cool, uh, a really nice product. So it does all that, except it looks acceptable, which is good enough. Uh, obviously, the inspiration, uh, oh, next slide, man. Yeah, man. Uh, the name is Aurora. I'm not sure why, but it's a great name. Uh, it's amazing. Like, this is a really beautiful product, and you will not want to stop looking at it exactly like a Boreal Aurora. So, next slide again. It changed a lot from the beats, uh, the little pills and things like this. We tried to make something that's going to be a throwback to the way 
everybody used to have a stereo in their house. You used to love using it, you used to like go back to it, and now it's gone. It's just a small Bluetooth speaker, and that does all the same uh, function. Use that, and the next one. Yeah, it, it all started actually in... I was really stuck with this design, and uh, one day in Japan, oh. I, I came with the inspiration, and, um, and yeah, that, that's where we ended. Like, uh, tada Endo. Um, you know, it was all like trying to make it zen, get some beautiful material, wood, aluminium, it's a tube amplifier, we really wanted something that's a mix between modern and old school. The inspiration for this is all retro future. We, we wanted something that's really going to remind you um, the times where you had something that, you know, you, you wanted to look at it, you wanted to enjoy it, and I think I think this does the tricks. You want to have one maybe in your kitchen, maybe in your living room, maybe in your office. You, you should buy at least three or four of them for every room <laughs> in your house, really. So, um, yeah. And uh, with Torsten, we, we've been working a lot on making it amazing. You didn't see there, but like, if you come next to it, it turns on by itself, and it's just, it's, it's magic. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the evening. Cheers. It's, it's full high res, so it's 192K, 24 bit. It's a little bit like 4K TV. You know, there's not that much uh, recordings out there, though some very good ones, but if you've got them, smoke it. The bottom line is a lot of it uh, involves compromises in sound quality, and especially clarity, resolution, those things that at least us high end people value. Everyone else is happy with a good beat, that's okay. But some people want more, more better. So, we don't want this. So what we do instead is a little more complex. We of course have the same Wi-Fi chip as everybody else. Yeah, come on, you can't beat them, you have to join them. But instead of letting this thing do all the processing, we go straight into an audiophile DAC, convert the signal to analog, and then everything else stays in the analog domain. Volume control, all this processing for this thing, because to get some decent bass out of a small box, it doesn't happen naturally. You have to break some laws. The speed physics. is quite unusual. This is probably the fastest amp in the world. I don't know. Maybe somebody's made something faster. Usually somebody did. But it's about f it's bloody fast. It's got tubes. It's all analog. Audiophile DAC. Oh, wait, wait, we, we promised you a speaker, didn't we? Do we have anything on a speaker? Oh, okay. oh, we have the Bluetooth. Oh, the Bluetooth, this is the same thing we are, we've been doing before, same thing. You know, again, don't, don't use the uh, system on the chip, don't use the analog output. A lot of uh, speakers like this I've seen, the Bluetooth output is analog. Goes to an ADC, gets digitalized, and then goes into the uh, Wi-Fi oh, chips. Mm. So here we've got the whole amplifier technology and DAC technology, which has been building on all these things that we've been doing for years. Things like high quality clocks, doing as much as possible analog, not digital. That's been, we've been doing it for decades. No, preferably no oversampling, minimal digital processing. Keep it in the analog domain if you have to do some system and that's tuned extremely low. And again, you've heard it already. Those are passive radiators, quite large ones as you can see, steel. As big as possible. As big as possible. Again, I gave it more headaches. And uh, the, the result is you can get really low bass out of a really compact system. That's really, 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 really stupid. And that's exactly what we did. Automatic room tailoring. This is the same thing you get in a digital meter to measure the distance in a room. A lot of builders use those. I use them when I work on my own house. It tells you how far away from a wall you are. Once you know how far away from a wall you are, left, right, and back, you actually know where you are in a room. And you can adjust everything, just so. So, you don't need to pick, read the 100-page manual. And again, it's all done in the analog domain. We don't try to even out every little wrinkle in the frequency response. That doesn't sound good. We just try to make sure the balance of sound is right wherever you put it. So don't worry, put it where you want. 
it'll be okay. And yeah, thank you. Uh, back to serious drinking, I suggest. <laughs> and thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Thank you. 